Hey everybody, this is Joel Janikowski from Hedinger Public School here with you on Hawk Talk. We're going to be talking with Dr. Tara File uh, about a few different things that she's doing here at the school um, today with not only our students but also our community. So I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Tara File here on the podcast. Tara, thank you very, very much for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So where, where are you originally from? So I, I grew up in the Bismarck Mandan area, but truly my, my roots are here in Hedinger. I, my my mom was a graduate here, Colette Spihovic of Hedinger oh, okay. High School. My grandfather, Delmer Spihovic, spent most of his working life right here in these walls. Oh, wow. And he, he was a shop teacher. I'm sure many from his generation oh, yes. would okay. remember so, him. So he you're was... talking about Joey Erickson's uh, dad. Yes. Correct? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. okay. And so I, I, I'm really honored to be here, really knowing that, that this this place and the people here meant so much to him, and he meant a lot to me. That's awesome. I, I do, yeah. yeah, I hear very, very many, many good stories. Yeah. Awesome. So, so you're originally from Mandan. You're, you're doing a little bit of work here. Where, where did you go to, where did you go to school, like, uh, after you left Mandan? Where did you go? Sure. So I, so I went to St. Mary's High School in, in Bismarck, and then I went to college on the East Coast in Washington, D.C. at a small university called Catholic University. And I got my psychology undergraduate degree there. And after that, I went down to the University of Kansas, go Jayhawks, Jayhawk <laughs> basketball for a, a PhD program in clinical psychology. So I okay. spent some time there earning my PhD and then did my um, kind of post PhD work in Minneapolis, St. Paul, before finally coming back to Bismarck to, to make it my home and live okay. and work there. So you've been really traveling quite a bit. I have. Actually. I made a big circle out east and then came back to the Midwest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so that, that brought you out all to college and everything like that. What made you go um, into that profession? What, what, what pulled you in that direction? You know, I think I knew from a very young age, probably as young as middle school, to be honest, that I wanted to work with people and directly with people. People are endlessly fascinating. And I found myself gravitating toward wanting to to help, to give and to serve friends, especially friends who were struggling, even in those early years. And I, as I delved more into the profession, learning about it, it just became clear to me that this was an incredible opportunity to do something that was not only meaningful, but exciting and interesting and engaging in a multitude of ways. And, and truth be told, there really has not been a dull or boring day since I started this work. So I've been very happy with, with my career path. I, I believe that. I believe that. So that really lit your brain on fire since, yeah, since yeah. really young. Well, and truthfully, I had a wonderful teacher, a wonderful teacher. Mr. Vetter was his name, okay. Mr. Gerald Vetter, uh, in, at St. Mary's High School who taught psychology class, AP psychology. And it was you know his mentorship and his teaching style that really ignited that fire for me. So I, I go back and, and really have to give him some credit and thank him for, for being such a fantastic teacher. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's awesome. So... You, you know, you did your high school, you did your college, um, and then you came back to the Bismarck Mandan area. So what are you doing there now? So I wear a multitude of hats now. I you know, Part of my work historically has been at one of the two local hospitals, CHI St. Alexis Health. I have in the past done exclusively therapy work for, for kids all the way up to adults, you know, kids as young as 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, all the way up to 90s, 93, 94 years old, all across different diagnoses and, and life interests. But now my work focuses a little bit differently. So in addition to, to therapy work that I've done in the past, I now focus a lot of my time doing education and consultation work, like the work I'm doing here in Hedinger. Gotcha. So I, I often am hired by you know, schools or businesses or organizations to come in and help coach or teach about mental health. It, long and short of it is, is how to help people be healthy and happy and reach their goals. But I really, really enjoy this kind of work. I speak to large groups. I work one-on-one -on -one with leaders of different organizations. And I really just help people become their best possible selves. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And, and in, in addition to that, I was actually at um, uh, Miss Miss Files' presentation for the uh, juniors and seniors this afternoon. And I don't think I've ever seen a more engaging public speaker oh, ever. That was very, you. very enjoyable to watch. It was very, very educational. And I learned a lot and, and heard a lot of things that I like to hear. So that was, that was really, really great to see that. Um, so you're really in this wheelhouse of passion. Mm -hmm. is what's going on. You're finding that yep. that that uh, that thing that really gets you excited about life. Um, but you're you're here with the kids. You're you're working on what exactly with the kids when we were doing these presentations I was talking about. Yeah. You know, we talked quite a bit about resilience today. You know, we 
we as a society struggle with this, I think. You know, as a larger society, as Americans, somehow most of us have received the message at some point through our youth that a hardy, resilient person is somebody who really gets through things without struggling much, right? Which couldn't be more false. <laughs> if we actually look at people in life who are wildly successful, who are healthy, who are happy, they often have numerous periods throughout their life of struggle, of hardship, of feeling down, possibly even depressed or anxious at times. And what I, the message I sent to the kids today and the message that I really want the community at large to know is that it's okay to struggle. It's human to have tough times and you can struggle and bounce back well. And so I shared with the students today several tips and strategies, exercises that they can use to make sure that they know how to handle that struggle and what to do when they're stuck in the mud instead of just staying stuck there or, or getting down on themselves for having a bad day or a tough time. I want them to know that, it, that it's normal, it's okay to be there, and that there are small steps they can take to keep on driving. Because you remember my analogy, Absolutely. keep on driving Absolutely. toward having a great year, even if they are having a tough day or a tough time. What were, what were some of the tips that you were giving them to kind of let our listeners know, kind of like, what were some of the examples that you were giving them or tips that you were giving them to get through those challenging times? Yeah, great question. I think the first tip is really just understanding and remembering that you're not a weak person. You're not a... a, a a bad person if you have a tough day or if you're feeling anxious, insecure, lonely, stressed, bored, whatever it may be, you're human. And so starting from that jump off point is critical. Remembering, oh, it's just a tough day. That's all it is. And there are actually things I can do to help myself continue to be healthy and reach my goals, even though I'm feeling a little bit sad or down or, or bored or anxious or whatever it is today. We did, though, go through several different exercises, a breathing exercise, uh, what we call in, in the psychology literature a progressive muscle relaxation exercise to really help the kids learn tangible strategies they can use to calm down their nervous system. We went through a savoring exercise, which is more on the positive psychology realm of things, but so important. I, I actually have a, a TED Talk. Uh, wow. If you Google yes. ter Dr. Terrifile, you know, TED Talk, you, it'll pop up and you can learn more about this. But I talked to the kids a bit about how much our brains are really pulled toward noticing the stressful negative things around us and how critical it is to spend some time soaking up, noticing and really savoring the good things that happen around us. So we, we did a little savoring exercise to help them remember to look for the good and to really let that soak in as well. Because overall, I, I, I really want to send home the message for the kids that feeling is good and it's important to get good at feeling good, noticing the good around us. And it's important to get good at feeling bad sometimes and, and learning and how letting to go life across happen. that challenge. Yeah. yeah. That's phenomenal. That's fantastic. So um, what grades did you work with today here at the school doing your presentations? Today I spoke with fifth through 12th grade. It was wonderful. They they came kind of in, in little segments, you know, fifth and sixth and seventh together, eighth and 10th together, and then 11th mm -hmm. and 12th together. And I, I truly have to say, this has been a, a treat for me. I speak to a lot of students. I speak to a lot of people on and off. And, and this group of Hedinger students was so respectful and so kind, and they were they were just enjoyable. They, they, they laughed along with me. They did the exercise along with me and and they really were uh, a, an exceptionally good group to work with they surprised me in that way not all students are that participative that kind that respectful so kudos to you guys and what you're doing with these kids here that's great that's yeah. really great so now you you worked with the kids um actually kind of dialing back a little bit one of the things you were talking about is one of your um exercises where you were doing the breathing that was one of the tips mm -hmm. that you were giving with the kids mm -hmm. um it was kind of funny we heard mr Siemens say oh we're done why can't we go a little bit longer? <laughs> yeah. I was right in that boat with them. I wanted to do a little bit longer because I finally kind of had that nice little moment to just calm down, relax, yeah. and kind of decentralize. And that was so, so enjoyable. Well, and that, that's the interesting thing about these exercises. They're not rocket science. We all know that breathing can help the body calm down, but knowing it and doing it are very different things. And I, I, I tell people that all the time, that it's just like going to the gym. You really have to spend that time exercising that muscle, practicing to, mm -hmm. to have that benefit. And especially if you're someone who struggles regularly with anxiety or panic, sometimes you can't just pull those things out when you need them if you haven't practiced them. The body needs to learn how to go through that nice, slow breathing process to, to have it work when you really need it. So do you feel like something like that is where after a person does those um, exercises, time and time again, they mm -hmm. have a better and better impact over time. So maybe the yes. first time you may not experience as well as the 10th time. Or the exactly. 20th time. 
Exactly. Okay. That's awesome. That's phenomenal. So you worked with the kids, um, but you're also here after school too. What, what's that all about? Yes, I am really excited about this. I, I've been invited to give a community presentation. So everyone is welcome. Parents are welcome. Staff and teachers, administration is welcome. I even invited the students to come back if they want to, if they want to yes. hear me talk for longer this evening. And in that presentation, it'll be a bit longer and a bit more in depth. So I plan to share a, a, a similar but more expanded message for the community that really goes into some of the research and some of the nuts and bolts behind what builds a resilient kid, what builds a resilient person. We all know it's not a simple trick or strategy. I can't go in there and say, oh, if you just do breathing exercises every day for <laughs> five years, you're going to be able to bounce back from anything. You know, that, oh, yeah. that, we all know that's yeah. not true. No, it's, not it's far more complex than that. But there are some, some themes that are clear in the literature about what nuts and bolts do build a person who is capable of bouncing back well and, and quickly. And, and that's what I plan to share with the community. So that's going to be happening here to tonight, do, um, a little bit after parent-teacher conferences. Um, and then after that, um, aside of that presentation, let's say if someone wanted to find more information on what you're talking about, um, they obviously can Google your name for TED Talks. And if you could quick spell your name so that way people can find you. Sure, I'd be happy to. Is it Dr. Tara File? It's T-A-R-A-F as in Frank, E-I-L, File. Rhymes a smile. And I do have a little website. If you want to check it out, you can contact me there. It's it's terrapsych.com. So it's T-A-R-A-P-S-Y-C.com with any questions. I, I'd be happy to, to get back with folks and be happy to help in any way I can. Fantastic. And for those who are listening to the podcast, whether you're on uh, wherever you listen to your podcast, if you do listen on YouTube, we will be putting those links in the description of this video so you can find them quickly and easily. Um, so kind of to summarize everything, you know, that you've been here and everything like that, um, we're, we're very, very, very thankful to have you come in and be this resource, not only for our students, but also for the staff and the community. We really, really, really appreciate you coming here. Well, thank you for having me. Like I said, this, this town will always have a special place in my heart. It's, I've got roots here, my, my grandfather, my grandmother, my, my family. And so it really is an honor to be back here. And I'm, I'm appreciative for the opportunity. Thanks for listening to Hawk Talk, Heading Republic Schools' official podcast. You can follow us anywhere you listen to your podcast, or you can follow the stream team on YouTube.